Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down and back for a little more Spooktober action. Yes, I failed yesterday. My goal was to get caught up, and to be caught up, I would have had to have posted my movie for yesterday. Uh, as you know, if you've been following along, the Seaman is doing his own Spooktober this year, um, and all month long, we will be watching a movie every day and reviewing a movie. Hopefully every day, assuming we can do it. The first week I fell behind. We got caught up through the first week yesterday, and then I meant to post my movie for yesterday. And after I watched it, I was like, "Nah, I need, need to go to sleep." And that's what we did. So now here we are, man. It is October 9th, and we are taking a look at the October 8th movie. So why don't you pull up a chair, man? Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in to Halloween, man. 1978, not the most recent version. But the original, one of the most iconic slasher horror flicks of all time. And it is as iconic as it is because of three main factors. Uh, the first of those factors is John Carpenter. Uh, you know, he, he wrote here uh, with Deborah Hill. He directed the movie and he scored the movie. And the most important elements of this movie for me, are the direction and the score. Yes, the story is strong. It's a perfect story for a slasher movie. But when you really look at it, the script has a lot of room to breathe, um, to give you know Michael the ability to do things, you know, to give the Laurie the ability to react and play with things, um, and kind of just gives the, the 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 movie room to breathe to explore what it can in these moments of horror and terror, um, and that's where the direction of John Carpenter is so important, um, and, and is the reason that this movie is so iconic. I mean, it sets the stage, sets the bar for the slasher flick. You know what I mean, like. It took that concept and brought it to a place that we hadn't seen before in the world of horror. And the things that Carpenter does with Michael Myers are genius and chilling. You know, as much as the movie has its jump scares here and there, what really makes the movie scary is the chilling elements of it. You know, the way Michael just appears out of a shadow slowly, you know, or the way that he just kind of sits straight up. Or that, you know, the camera will go here, the camera will come back, and when we go back one more time, he's gone. All of these things that are so commonplace in horror movies now and so, you know, more or less called cliches or tropes to the genre, this iconic, you know, direction and building to the world of horror by John Carpenter. And what he develops in what Michael Myers is, is really what makes the movie work and what makes the character be what the character is which is just an unrelenting presence you know the thing i love the most about this halloween movie versus pretty much all of the other ones is that there's no predictability to michael myers um spoilers this movie's from 1978 but we all know that michael myers as a six-year-old boy watches his sister and her boyfriend um messing around boyfriend leaves he goes in puts on a clown mask kills the sister. No reason or explanation to it. And everything that Michael does throughout the whole movie has no reason or explanation because he doesn't speak. We never hear from Michael. We just hear him breathe. The breathing from inside the mask. Uh, another one of those brilliant choices that Carpenter made to really add to the creepy. When Michael is in a room but you can't see him, you can hear him. Um, and it's terrifying to just hear you know, like, if you put yourself in the shoes of someone like Laurie Strode, that's horrifying. Um, and, and on top of just the fact that he's this presence and he's unpredictable, you know, it is the fact that he's more than human. You know, I, on the credits, if you go down, you look, you can't find Michael Myers unless it's associated with, like, an aged version of Myers where we see a face. Tony Moran plays the 23-year-old version of him that we see uh, climb on the car at the beginning, I believe, and also when he takes the mask off at the end of the movie. Um, he gets listed as Michael Myers. Will Sandin, age six, is listed as Michael Myers because we see his face. Um, but Nick Castle, who hasn't donned the mask since... You know, 1978, the only other time he donned it is this most recent one. You know, all the other movies, not him, but the original Michael Myers in Mask is Nick Castle. And when you find him on the, the credits list, he's listed as The Shape. He's not listed as Michael Myers. When that mask comes on, he is something different. And the fact that you can stab him, you can, you know, down the road in the future, all the different things. You could shoot him, you could, you, you, you could 
think that you've killed him three or four times. You can knock him off a roof. And he just keeps getting up and he just keeps coming and he never stops. And someone who never stops, who has no motive, um, is terrifying. And yes, I know the other movies when we go down eventually try to tie him and Laurie together, which is one of the reasons they made all these, re these this new round of remakes um, to pick the story up from where the original one took off. And, you know, you have those elements, and that's fine. You know, there are fan theories out there that Lori was the baby, so to make her the sister was an interesting thing to see played with. But when you look at the original movie, the thing that makes him so terrifying is that he's unpredictable. Um, and all of that is credited to, one, the castle's physical performance, but the direction of, you know, John Carpenter. I mean, even the opening. To shoot that POV... Put the mask on the camera. Uh, the only weird thing is when he's stabbing his sister, he looks up at his hand because it's a great camera shot, but not necessarily, like, would you watch your hand like this, you know, while you're stabbing somebody? But aside from that, the idea of a POV to open the movie and then reveal that it's this little boy, like, just genius stuff. And everything that Carpenter creates from ambiance and setting and tone is just perfect. And then, like I said, Nick Castle's physical presence is terrifying, you know? He plays like someone who can't be stopped. And then that third thing that makes this movie so tremendous is that John Carpenter score. That just the piano keys and the hits of them and the way that they can go from one thing to all of a sudden something different. And that slight change and or increase in speed or variance pulls you up in your chair, gets you tense, makes you hide, get ready. Like the, the sounds, like I said, Michael Myers breathing and those piano keys dictate what you do during the movie you know when when you when everything's just going along and all of a sudden you hear the dun, 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 dun. you're like uh oh something's coming and then all of a sudden the pace quickens and now it's like oh man michael myers must be somewhere like the movie is flowing and telling you where to go based on the the, the score alone and it's one of the most iconic horror scores so i mean john carpenter is obviously the big winner when it comes to halloween but the other big winner was making her silver screen debut um, in Jamie Lee Curtis, the original Scream Queen herself, and has been the Scream Queen from this point forward. Um, and the original version of Laurie Strode is one that, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis just crushes. You know, she's a regular girl. She has no ties to, to the Myers family. There'd be no reason for Michael to be hunting her down other than... Maybe it's just because he saw her first when she comes to the house to drop the keys off. Um, but she's just going about her normal everyday life in the small little suburb. You know, nothing crazy happens to her. And when crazy starts going down, you know, it, it starts slowly. You know, you, you see her seeing Michael pop up in all these places. And, and the, the tense and, and the, 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 the fear just starts to kind of build in Lori. But she keeps going about her, her daily routine. And then when Michael's... Finally, when she realizes what Michael's been doing, you know, killing all her friends um, and starts the terror end of it. The thing I love about Lori is she is real in the moment. She's horrified. She's terrified. She's never gone through any of this stuff. Yet she doesn't stop, you know, especially because she's babysitting what turns into two kids uh, when her friend drops off the, the, the second one to go pick up her boyfriend but never makes it. Um, you know, she's got these two kids that she has to keep protected. And that being her driving force and incentive keeps her going, keeps her figuring out enough to just survive. It's her survival that we, the audience, cling to and, and relate to. And I just thought Jamie Lee Curtis nails every aspect of it. Yes, when you keep watching the Halloween movies, you know, Laurie Strode becomes this badass who can fight Michael, you know, one on one. But in reality, you watch that original movie. I mean, she stabs him with a, a, a knitting like rod um and, and then once with the, the the knife she's reacting she is the girl who is in the closet hiding terrified screaming as michael comes through the closet um and her fear in the movie adds to our fear and it's one of those things that i think makes that character great is that you, you see her feel as scared as we are but she overcomes it she 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 fights through until she can survive that survival instinct is what gets laurie going which is another one of the things i love about the updated remakes that they're doing is that we're picking up from that character you know some people said oh this laurie was weird no man this laurie is coming off of a girl who's in high school who was terrorized by a crazy serial killer um or not even a serial killer just a killer man like i said no no motive no no anything to what he was doing that we could tell um but imagine being come or surviving that having to 
get past, you know, the, the murders of your friends, seeing your friends' dead bodies, you would be a little erratic and scared, but she is prepared. And that's the thing that I love about this new version of, of the movies and that makes me excited for what goes forward, besides the fact that Nick Castle is finally back in the mask. Oh, and that's the things that make this all work, man. It's the direction and, and leading and all the creation from, you know, Carpenter, the execution of what Michael Myers is as a character and the actual execution of that character by Nick Castle physically as the shape um, and then the performance uh, of Jamie Lee Curtis and the character of Laurie Strode that's the winning combination here and yes there's a fantastic cast behind you know them that do great jobs you know Donald Pleasance wonderful as Dr. Loomis super important character to the franchise um, and like I said, is the one who establishes the fact that Michael is not just a human you know refers to him as the evil um, you, you know, doesn't refer to him to, as Michael very much. Um, we don't get that perspective without Loomis. So super important and Pleasance is wonderful. But everybody that shows up, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the, the police officer, Lori's friends, they all do a great job. But the other standouts for me, I believe, are Kyle Richards and Brian Andrews, who played Lindsay and Tommy, the two little kids. Um, they do a really good job. Lindsay, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're there more than they're in it. Like I said, it's more about Lori and Michael. But the, the terror aspects and the running around, I mean, I wouldn't want to be a kid having to run away from Michael Myers. It'd be terrifying. Um, and, you know, they hold their own pretty well. But all in all, like I said, this one's about Jamie Lee Curtis. It's about Nick Castle, Michael Myers. It's about John Carpenter. And it is just about the most iconic horror film of all time. And I love the original Halloween. It, it is one of my all-time favorites, what got me into the genre. And I look forward to seeing what Carpenter and Code do with these new movies because I really, really dug the last one. So there you go, man. Those are all my thoughts on the original 1978 Halloween. Um, it, I mean, you can't be a horror fan and not love this movie. Um, so the question is, are you a real horror fan? <laughs> what are your thoughts of the original Halloween, man? Uh, where did, did you stumble across it? You know, where does it fall in your litany of movies? Did it spark your interest in, like it did for me getting into the genre of horror and slasher flicks? Where does it land? Were you there when it came out in the theater? Uh, my mom went and saw this movie. This is one of the things I love about this film. And uh, the, she was in college. I guess the dorms were easy to break into. So one group of friends had gone and seen the movie earlier in the day, bought a mask, went back, broke into my mom and her roommate's um, you know, dorm room, hid in the closet so that when they came back, already traumatized just from watching the movie, she was like, I could never watch scary movies again after this because they popped out of the closet looking like Michael Myers. Um, that's what I mean, man. The, the character is iconic, and there's so many stories like that. So if you were around uh, back in 1978 when it came out, you've got those original you know, stories coming from the theater. If you were someone who's a little bit younger and grew up watching this on, on the TV, we all have those first experiences. So whatever your experience was, your thoughts about Halloween, down below in the comment section. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the C-Man all spooktober long, and you haven't yet, Come, join the rest of the Sea Maniacs. Show a little love, support. Hit that uh, subscribe button over there. Hit that little bell if you want those alerts. And until next time, for the Sea Man Cinema Sit Down, I've been the Sea Man. I'm signing off. Peace. Well, I'll be. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. Sea Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet and you want to come check out all the Sea Man goodies, Join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.